How's it going YouTube? Overbugger James here. So I've decided to start a new series here. I'm going to be doing some spin and goes and we're going to try out all the different limits that you can find on spin and go maxes. So spin and go maxes specific I think only to PokerStars uh, and it's a little bit different to regular spin and goes uh, in that you don't know what prize first place will win until the very end. You also have uh, a random number of players, anything between three people and eight people. You also have between one person paid, two people paid, three people paid. I think even if you hit the biggest jackbox, you can have seven people paid in an eight-handed tournament. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy high variance game that uh, I do do a lot on stream. I thought it's worth making some videos looking at the different player types and player pool in the different stakes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the $3 stakes. I'm not going to bother playing the uh, $1 stakes because they're, from what I saw, they're essentially the same kind of players. So we play the $3, $7, $15, 30s, 60s and 100s. So it's a nice little mini series that we'll do throughout, I guess, the month. And uh, let me know what you think about it. If you like it, please hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. Otherwise, we do have a Spin and Go Max section over on our Discord channel, so you might want to check that out. Link to the Discord down in the description below. Anyway, let's uh, jump into these games. So, we're starting with these four tables. What we'll do is I'll do a set of four. So a set of four, I'll play these four tables, and then if we bust any of them, we will um just focus on the other stuff on the ones that we're still in if you notice all of these are going to have very very different price pools when you see all of these boxes here so we've got three options if we win we have to pick a box and we'll find out what the prize is behind each one so yeah let's do these four tables uh you're going to find a lot of limping so down on table four this one here we had a cutoff limper um these games are very very soft you can get fairly decent win rates i would say at uh, the micro stakes so these ones and these threes definitely can get some good there you go you can get some good win rates because uh, of all this limping there you go button limping up here as well uh, so they are just as soft maybe even a little bit softer than regular spinning goes but what we're here for today is uh, really just looking at the kind of different strategy you want to use in these in these games so um you'll find these games are very passive so against these passive types of opponents we want to see lots of flops and then when we can hit we want to get as much value from it as we can you'll find that even pre-flop when someone makes these big sizes people will call for all all the chips basically it's quite interesting um, just seeing people not aware of bet sizings. You'll often see them min betting. Maybe they're playing on the phone. Maybe they don't realize that they should be changing their bet size to uh, get more value from the pots. But yeah, overall, just lots and lots of weak opponents, which is great for us, right? These are the types of opponents you want to be up against because you can play lots of hands. When you hit, you build the pot up. And when they hit, they don't so it's really good for us i'm just going to play very very simple abc poker uh, and you'll find that it does pretty well on these lineups now one thing that's a little bit different to regular spinning goes this one not so much because it's one person paid but if you look here up in the top right hand corner it will tell you how many people are paid in each of these games so in this one we got two people paid in this one we got two people paid uh, and then the top two tables it's winner take all um, just because a game is free-handed four-handed five-handed doesn't mean that the price structure will always be the same if you got a good multiplier i.e., the big boxes then it's more likely that more people will be paid in these games so yeah i think if it's a six-handed game or higher you will always have more than one person paid but if there's five or less, it can be winner take all. So something worth noting. Ace nine, we're going to shove against the limp and a reshove, just like in a spin and go. 
basically would do the same there. And then down here, uh, it was a limped pot, which we bet the flop. We let out, bet the flop, got called, uh, and then decided to kind of control the, the uh, pot size. And then on the river, we're going for thin value with our hand. And we get min raised, which is still very easy call cool for us. Uh, so yeah, we managed to, because of the ridiculous passive nature of our opponents, hit top pair uh, on an okay run out and not lose stacks. So pretty nice. Um, one thing you will notice about these, these spin and go maxes is that for some reason, whatever reason it is, uh, this is the deck type you have to use. I tried using the ones that I normally do on my videos, but it's just not working, so not much to do about that. Um, so yeah, if you like a certain deck, it's going to be hard to get that to work. Maybe there's a way. Uh, there's no simple way, though. You're going to have to do something uh, yourselves. So when we are playing with more than one person paid, we do have to think about trying to survive to get into the money when there's a few people left. So there is basically some some like ICM pressure when two people are paid or more. Um, this is something you have to learn and be aware of. So having a program like Holden Resources Calculator or um, what else have we got? Hot Resources Calculator or ICMizer. They're good things to have. Uh, kings, we're going to just be really trying to get max value here with our kings. And then hopefully we can take this spin and go down as well. They had a7. I don't know what they're thinking the way they played it, but uh, we like it. It's good. And now, oh, three big blinds and you get ace king. What is this? But yeah, we just keep playing these until we run out. So we won one. That means there's only three left. And at the end, you get to pick the box. So if you've seen, I've done a few session review videos of people who played spin and go maxes. So if you want to see how I react to other people playing, we do have session reviews of this as well, not just me live playing. Uh, personally, I've made about... 2.5k from these spin and go maxes i've played a lot of them uh, i've had some very bad variants when it comes to picking the boxes as you can see uh, which is why i think my win rate isn't that high so i think my win rate is even less than one percent roi um, because of how i've been picking the boxes really i think uh, you should have seen some of my big videos big spin and go videos spin max videos where they haven't gone particularly well over the past uh, year and a half but i do really believe these are games you can beat for a nice win rate the only problem is you need to play lots and lots of games or just get lucky uh, to see to see those nice win rates uh, and so far i just haven't played enough so on table one we are heads up and probably about to bust we just got to hope to oof, Hope to get lucky here. And we do. That's nice. Nice to see. Uh, you'll also notice this triangle. I didn't really talk about the triangle, but it tells you once this goes to zero, it means that everyone is forced all in every hand until the till the um, until there's one player left, until there's a winner. So it does create some pretty interesting, weird spots. We got full house. I think we've got to bet it, right? Okay. Yeah, it does create some weird and interesting spots. Let's say you've got one chip left and you're about to know that everyone's going to be forced all in. It's worth uh, not going all in and waiting for the all in phase for the next hand. Uh, or let's say you have loads of chips and then you're given the possibility of playing for 
some of your opponent's chips. And if you end up, uh, if if you lose in that spot and then you end up being a very short stack, it's probably not worth taking. Because if you're the win if you're the chip leader going into all-in phase, no matter what happens, you will survive that first all-in round. So if there's like five of you going all in, all being forced all in, it's a pretty uh, useful spot, I would say. Okay, we just got to put it in. We've got 110 chips left. We've got a big draw. Ouch. How can we have such a nice draw and be so dead? <laughs> um, yeah, try and, try and get back in this, right? So yeah, we've got two tables left. This one, we're down to the final three hands. Uh, I'm really trying to gamble. When it's late stage and you're not the big stack, you want to gamble to try and get that big stack. So that's what we're going to just keep doing. And if they let us, this is great. If we can get ourselves to that big stack or close to it, that's really good for us. So that's what we've tried to do. Uh, and it's worked out in this instance. If we had lost to Ace-8, we'd got 200 chips left. And then I'm just trying to wait it out to the all-in phase and just hope that we win the all-in phase. Uh, and then here, we're, we're happy having 982. Um, this player with 770 chips will go to 920 chips. What will happen here is if there's three of you left um, and two people are paid, the opponent with the smallest stack is going to have to win the all-in phase if they want to cash. So just not being the smallest chip stack is really important here. We end up winning. What a life. So we've got second place guaranteed, which was $5. But obviously we want the win. That would be much better. And we just got to wait it, for, wait it out for the all-in phase. Uh, it does mean that there's a lot less heads up. So if heads up isn't your specialty, if you struggle with heads up, spin and go max might be something you're interested in. Also, if you enjoy or you think you're good at um, ICM, understanding when when to play for chips and when to just try and survive then this might be the game for you as well uh, or if you like gambling and picking boxes <laughs> like i do it might be a useful one to play anyway right we're going to try again this time do better please <laughs> yeah this is this might be the reason why i uh haven't got such good uh win rate in these games just box picking um yeah it is all these extra things such as all in phase such as uh, box picking all the different multipliers all the different amounts of people increases the variance dramatically so when the invariance is increased you're going to need to play more games to to realize what you should be winning uh it can mean that you can get really really lucky as well though there are plenty of people who think they are regs in this game that are exceptionally bad players um, who have just had a good lucky streak to start with and now they're just tanking and uh, they'll eventually lose the money. But it's going to take them many thousands of games to realize that, I would say. That's what happens in these high variance formats. I, I think if you're able to play 30,000 of these games or more, you can really start seeing what kind of win rate you, sh you can expect. Um, and there's a, so many different spots that you could study so I would say it's just as complicated or even more complicated than spinning goes I think the win rates that are available are going to be a little bit lower but um, you can easily more easily play lots of tables I would say all right so pocket fours here I don't know if we want to take this spot. It really depends on if this player um, realizes that they should go all in. Okay. Because if we fold here, our opponent in the big blind should call there any two because they can get themselves to be chip leader while at the same time not risking their tournament life. And if we know that as our stack, then we should be calling very wide as well. To, um, to stop that from happening. 
Now, unfortunately, we ran into nines, but we did have pocket fours, which was a fairly strong hand. Like, if I had even, if I knew this guy was a reg, even if I had a hand like jack five off, I would call that that shove. Because worst case scenario is I still have a few chips to going into all-in phase. Best case scenario is I'm chip leader going into all-in phase. So really, really good spot there. All right, so let's try and pick the biggest box in the last game, please. We won three out of four. That's not bad. I mean, this one was pure luck there, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, there you go. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's spin max in a nutshell, right? Win three, worst box in all three. Uh, anyway, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, tell me how you feel about Spin and Go Max. Um, I have been grinding and playing it on Twitch. You will find me occasionally grinding and playing it over on Twitch. So maybe give that channel a follow if you haven't done so already. Or if you just want to chat about Spin and Go Max, we do have a Discord section just for Spin and Go Maxes. I'll show you it here. Um, memes galore normally. Pull it out. Spin and Go Maxes. Yeah. Oh, this is a bit more. Yeah, we've got all the Lord of the Rings memes going on at the moment for Spin and Go Maxes. Generally, people are just talking and complaining. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> It's a tight-knit community. Anyway, so next video, I'll be playing the sevens and eventually we'll get all the way up to the 100s. I have been playing and streaming mostly the 30 to $100 limits. Um, I think that all of them are beatable. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.